Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Max Podcast. My name is Steve Shaver, and I'm the manager of service training for Max, the Mobile Air Climate Systems Association. And today I'm joined, as usual, by my co host, Peter Cole. Welcome, Peter. Uh, good afternoon. Good Wednesday afternoon, Steve. Wednesday afternoon, yep. Wednesday afternoon today. Middle of the week. Yep. yep. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm outstanding. Yep. We have a lot going on at Max right now. Oh, it's crazy. We actually have some meetings going on this evening, yep. uh, which is going to be uh, some fun interaction with some local shop owners. Yep. Um, yep. But before we get into what's going on with Max, I got to ask you something. What do you have to ask me, Steve? What is this? Oh. So when I walked into work this morning, this was on my desk. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I kind of have an idea what it is, but how did this come to me? How did that come to be? So, yes. so um, I'm, I, I drive a car that has insufficient horns. <laughs> and uh, I've attempted to put sufficient horns on it, but uh, they tend to rust out and don't last so long. So I, I saw a YouTube video and I said, hey, you know what, there's the do-it-yourself horn. And I think as Steve can attest to, it is something you do not want to do in an enclosed space. No, definitely don't pull that trigger don't in the building. The in, in, <laughs> yeah. in, in it's the even building. a little dangerous doing it outside around how some of the buildings echo, because yeah. this thing is loud. And you you <laughs> so. really need, you, you need earplugs. I mean, you need earplugs. If you're going to operate it, you need earplugs. But I can tell you, that I actually have held it out the window over the weekend when oh. someone was not uh, not progressing well enough from a traffic light and uh, reminded them that uh, there was that cars traffic, go traffic behind them. Yeah. So, anyway, that's kind of cool. So getting down to Max business. Yes. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is uh, kind of an update. So we were talking earlier this year about uh, EPA's NPRM or the Notice of Proposed Rulemaking. Yep. And I think at that time you said you were expecting something late summer, and now it's August, uh, end of August, so it's late summer. What's going on? So, so the latest that we, we've been told is, uh, first of all, so we're talking about a Notice of Proposed Rulemaking from the EPA that has a direct impact on anyone who manufactures or sells AC service equipment, particularly AC service machines and every shop owner who is servicing vehicles with AC service machines. The, the law in the AMAC, and we won't rehash the whole thing, we've done another video on that, basically says that, um, that I can't reuse the refrigerant until it's been reclaimed. Not recycled, but reclaimed. And so we've had a lot of conversations with the EPA and other folks related to that. And their first notice of proposed rulemaking on that subject is due out, we're told now, September 30th, which happens to be a magic day for the government because it's the last day of the fiscal year. Right. So we're told it'll be out September 30th, what we expect. Um, and I, I hope I'm not stepping on any of my friends at the EPA, but what we expect is that they're going to hold off on a final rule related to automotive and they'll put out another rule or an amended rule in maybe the next 12 to 18 months or so that will address automotive. And we're hoping that uh, rule comes favorably and we'll be able to continue servicing vehicles the way we have for the past 30 years successfully. So for now, we're basically now. good. Status quo for Status now, quo. But we do expect this notice of proposed rulemaking out uh, September 30th. All right, that's yep. cool. Yep. Uh, so not just uh, automotive, though. I mean, this is going to cover all mobile AC. That's, uh, well, that's, that's correct. It's actually for all uh, AC, all refrigerant work. It basically says that, um, that refrigerants cannot be reused until they've been reclaimed. And it does not segregate between the market or the sector. It could be a refrigerator in a grocery store. It could be uh, a car in a, in a shop. It could be um, an, a tractor, a, a John Deere or some large tractor that's doing a cornfield. Residential. In Iowa. Doesn't matter. Right. Um, and what we're, what we're looking for is we're looking for them to kind of carve out automotive in a different fashion. And, uh, and I think we're going to get that, but it's going to be about 18 months. But the first rulemaking will is expected to be published on September 30th. Right. Yeah. Well, it's funny that it coordinates with uh, 
that time of the year, right? It Last does. day of the fiscal year, because sure there's another thing happening. Not technically not on September 30th, but on October 1st. Yeah, that's that's right. And and it gets a little confusing, and I still get confused by it. But essentially, what we know, and uh, and again, we've touched on this in the past, but this is just kind of an update on where we are. Very shortly, within the next five six weeks, the new allocations kick in for HFC refrigerants. Right. And that then presents a 40% reduction from the original baseline and an additional 30% reduction from those uh, allocations that were put in place in 2022. So for everybody who remembers, um, if you can remember far enough back to when you paid $119 or so for a cylinder, a 30-pound cylinder of 134A, and then magically that was $400, uh, that was in large part due to the allocation uh, situation. And nobody knew, and you know, it could be some price stuff. Uh, but I'd be surprised if the price goes down once we cut that supply a little further. Yeah, I don't think uh, that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, so. I can only guess. I've talked to some people just to get ideas of what they think. Yeah. And a couple of us remember what happened with R12 in the late 90s. Yep. And the price really went high. I mean, we were seeing eight, dollars $900 a bottle. Correct. Uh, not too far after uh, the official cut down uh, yep. in 1995. So yeah. I hate to speculate what we're going to see in this situation, but, uh, you know, we sort of put some numbers out there in the summer of 21, so about six months before we had our 10% phase down. Yeah. And we were thinking that we may see a doubling in price. Right. And we ended up seeing... Tripling. Right, tripling, right. four times the price even. Yeah. So I can only guess what's going to happen this time around. Right. So we're not, we're not suggesting anyone go speculate on the market and go buy 15 right. pallets of refrigerant. You have to make your own decisions there. But what we know is that there, is, there will be fewer HFCs available. And HFCs are things like 410A and 404 and 134A and all kinds of other HFC refrigerants. Right. It's not just what we not use just in mobile. 134A. Right. Uh, but um, there'll be less. And there's also less demand. We need to keep that in mind because new cars are coming with YF now. Not oh, that's true. Yeah, every year part, so there's more YF cars and less 134A right. cars. So we're not using as much on the factory floor. But those YF cars, in theory, don't need service. And the 134A cars that were made, I don't know, 2013, 14, 15, maybe even the 16 and so forth, are kind of getting to the point where, where that average AC service might be needed. Right. And uh, and we also know there's been a ridiculous amount of AC service this year. Right. Because why? It's been hot. Unbelievably hot. In most of the country, right? Yeah. Ridiculously hot in a lot of places of the country. And we're not here to talk about why that might be or right. might not be. That's, that's no, not the point. No, but it's just something that we're hearing it's from our members. It is hot. And, and we hear from the members and we hear from our service members that um, some some folks, people out in Phoenix and places like that, if they could run three shifts, they'd run three shifts because they've got enough work to support that because uh, you, people can't live without their air conditioning, especially in their cars. Right. So It's just um, too hot out, and it's been, it, it seems to, in some areas, it's just been day after day after week, and it just seems like it's the heat is unrelenting. It doesn't give up. Exactly. Right. Exactly, exactly. Um, so that's kind of the, the update on the EPA and, and, and where we are. There's obviously a lot of moving parts, things going on. Uh, but I know that you have some activity in the SAE groups, two particular things. One in the kind of heavy-duty off-road, which is kind of a specialty for you. I kind of hang out in the automotive folks, and, and you hang out with people who get dirty for a living. And, um, and then also uh, a little bit on uh, cabin disinfection. You want to tell us about uh, both of those standards that you're working on? Yeah, so the um, cabin disinfection one is, is interesting. Um, I guess I'll start with that one. So the, there's a, new, a relatively new SAE committee. Uh, called, we, we call it the CDPC. Uh, it's the Cabin Disinfection Practices Committee. Which started why? Uh, it started because of COVID. There you go. Uh, it actually started, if I'm not mistaken, it started because of an email that you sent to me in March of 2020 that came through some of our 
fellow shop owners and members and friends at AMRA yep. uh, that contacted you and then came to Max uh, looking for information about what we're going to do uh, information-wise, what we're thinking with the industry for dealing with cars coming into the shops when people have COVID. Yeah, that's, right? that's, that, that, I'm glad you, you, you reminded me of that. You know, obviously I wasn't here at Max at the time, but I was uh, an active participant in, uh, in AMRO, the Motors, Motorist Assurance Program, who, by the way, will be joining us for their technical committee meeting at our- Oh, at the Max training, training event, right. In Orlando. Um, but uh, yeah, um, uh, some of the members there are people like Firestone and Big O Tire and Midas and so forth. Um, so I got an, an email from those folks saying, hey, by the way, what do you know about how we can service cars? Is there anything out there about disinfecting a car before we even touch the door handle to get in? Because at the time, everyone, you know, this is going to spread like wildfire, and if I touch the wrong thing and I need to wear gloves, and et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, so that's where it started. And it's taken this long to kind of get where we are because the reality is we didn't have any data. We didn't know. Yeah. Right. We were yeah. guessing at what to do and what to write down. And we had some meetings at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, the spring into early summer of 20, we had quite a few meetings with Max and Max members, all mm -hmm. online, of course, right, uh, through Zoom and Teams, um, and with some of our uh, SAE colleagues. Yep. And we put together some short documents and then published an article in Action Magazine. Uh, and also an MSR with what we thought was good at the time yep. and what information we were getting from the field. Um, so what ended up happening was uh, we had uh, quite a bit of involvement through SAE mm -hmm. and some of our um, committee members really wanted SAE to get involved and do something. Um, so what we did was we ended up going through uh, all of the Interior Climate Control Standards Committees and then ended up going to Motor Vehicle Council. Mm -hmm. So basically the top of SAE and getting a lot of input. Yep. And eventually Motor Vehicle Council decided we're going to start a whole new committee called Cabin Disinfection Practices Committee. Yep. So that's where that started. Um, basically by the time we got rolling it was the summer of 21. And by the time I really got involved was the end of 21, so November, December. Mm -hmm. And that's when I uh, started acting as uh, vice chair for the committee and actually took on the role of sponsoring our first document. So where do we stand? Because remember, this was the short updates on a whole bunch of topics. Short updates. Short updates. So where do we stand on the cabin disinfection standard? So we have two. Okay. Uh, the first one is, uh, actually they're not standards, they're recommended, recommended practices. practices right. Yeah. So we have 3260, so SAE J3260 is basically our recommended practice for surfaces, surface mm -hmm. disinfection. Okay. And then um, J3290 is for airborne contaminants. Gotcha. So 3260 is already done and published. Mm -hmm. We got that finished at the end of 22. Right. And, that, and, and, and that one, for all practical purposes, says go get your basic Clorox wipe and wipe off the surface. Right. It's about, okay. it's about handling exterior touch points and right. interior surfaces. Yeah. I, 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 I make right. light of that. I realize there's a lot more to it. But, but yeah, it, it's relates, pretty complicated. it relates to that part of it, which is um, what you surfaces, touch. hard and soft surfaces that you might touch. Right. Yep. And then, uh, so the one we're working on now, the recommended practices for airborne contaminants. Okay. And I would say we're probably, we're probably 85 to 90 percent of the way through that recommended practice. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping to get it uh, into ballot by the end of this calendar year. Okay. Um, at least, hopefully, we'll get it through by 24. Because I would, my goal, my personal goal. Um, is to present it at the big SAE meeting at Max 2024. Got it. So that's my my goal is to get it done by then. So let me ask you one other question. One of the hot topics for you and I and all of our SAE colleagues is the word agnostic. Yes. And that we, we want to look towards agnostic standards so we don't have to make a standard for something for 1234YF or a standard for something for 134A. You make a standard and then you kind of have a chart in the back and it says for 1234YF you must do numbers 1 through 14 and for 134A you must do numbers 1 through 12 and number 14. Right. 
And then if there's another refrigerant coming, you know, it'll tell you what you have to, which ones you have to do, which tests you have to do, or what the spec is for a thing. But then you, you just have to modify the chart in the standard. You don't have to create a whole new standard for each refrigerant. Right, because that was our old practice, right. was writing standards specifically for a refrigerant. Exactly. Which got, I don't want to say out of hand, but we ended up with a lot of documents. Well, we ended up with a lot of documents, and it was a good way to do it. But, but as we know with leak detectors, they're a great example that I can have a leak detector that has two certifications. It can have uh, J2913. For 1234YF and J2791 for 134A. Right. The same leak detector you can have both. And the goal would be well, why can't we have one standard and we just tell you this is certified to this standard for these refrigerants? Right. And uh, so, so anyway. that's the refrigerant agnostic part. One right. standard for electronic leak detectors, and then within that standard, we tell you what, what if any, is specific about a certain refrigerant. Any specific refrigerant. Right. So I bring this agnostic thing up because I'm assuming that your disinfection practices are intended to be agnostic, and they're not targeted at if we ever see COVID variant ABC again, here's what you do. This is. If you want to disinfect a cabin with, you know, due to a, for lack of a better term, COVID type of virus, here's what you do. Right. And we actually don't reference anything specific like COVID. Yeah. We use very generic terms uh, like virus right. or pathogen. Right. Um, because the CDPC is... Uh, a little bit outside of our normal realm of the Interior Climate Control Committee, right. because in there we're literally refrigerants, air conditioning, thermal management. Right. Where this, although it's related because COVID is an airborne pathogen, um, it's not necessarily. It, it can also be on seats. It could be on steering wheels. At least that's what we thought at the yeah. time. Well, I, I, so, I remember all those discussions because we were talking about okay, so do we need to have it into the interior seating people? Right. Or the people who do, um, you know, what dashboards are made out of, right? You know, or carpeting or whatever, and they're like, yeah, well, they're all different like groups. So, I, I right. Don't know. So where should this go? Where does this and that's go? actually why Motor Vehicle Council created a whole separate committee, right? Because it should stand on its own, right? Right. Um, so then the other thing you asked me about was uh, my work with the Off Highway Group. Yeah. Uh, so that committee is HFTC6, mm -hmm. and the document I'm sponsoring there is called J3126. So just like the one that you sponsored for the ICC, for the service committee, uh, J2845, mm -hmm. that does basically service, service recommended service practices for mm -hmm. mobile AC. Uh, this is recommended service for Off Highway Work Machines, Okay. So farm tractors, um, right. you know, construction equipment like that. Okay. okay. So, so it, it, that, that just, that becomes a guideline or a training guideline or, or something that, that says, hey, here are some really good things to do beyond your 609 or your 608 or whatever, that kind of don't ever vent refrigerant, you know, thou shall not vent standard. But other things to do, whether it's um, lubricating O-rings or or um, uh, you know, checking the pressure of a system right. you know, talks about a lot of those things. Visual inspection, yeah. leak detection, right. right? proper tools and equipment that we should be using, and right. then some of what how those tools work without getting too specific because some equipment manufacturers, you know, the equipment operates differently than certain other ones do. Right, so pick your favorite vacuum pump in a box right. and you shall recover the refrigerant. Right. <laughs> right. Gotcha. So what we're doing with that, um, it's actually been years in the making. We actually started working, I hate to say it, uh, 2015 is when we had our very first meetings on That's this nothing. recommended I know, practice. I, I, know, I know standards that were started way before dirt was invented. They're still right. not done. They're still not done. They're yeah. still work in progress. Yeah. But I think, we're, um, I think we're doing good. So we really picked up um, this past spring, mm -hmm. say about March time period, and we've been having monthly meetings, mm -hmm. and we're, we have a lot of momentum going right now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of activity um, from a lot of the off-highway equipment manufacturers. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping, again, with this standard that we can, or recommended practice, mm -hmm. that we can get this through to the balloting stage by the end of the calendar year. Okay. So. Cool. How about Max? What's going on here at Max? <sighs> a lot of stuff, actually. Fun, fun. Um, well, 
probably a little bit too early to talk about it because we're not officially published, but just a few short weeks, we're gonna have our official program, our yep. official training event brochure for MAX 2024. Yep, we right. are just uh, we're dotting the T's, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, yeah, both of those. Right. <laughs> And um, fixing the eyes that are crossed and the T's that are right, dotted. and making sure that we haven't don't have any double words, but we're in that kind of the final, final, final editing. Right. Um, we just there. sent so things we'll out to lay out yesterday, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So we'll have that shortly. That'll go in our September issue of Max Action. Right. And then, of course, be available online and and so forth. So we got that going for us. Are you traveling at all? Yeah, I have uh, a couple events coming up. Uh, so September for both of us, uh, and actually for a lot of our viewers and listeners, uh, it's a big travel month for industry meetings. Um, so I have uh, HFTC6. Our big committee meeting is happening in September. And so our, for our fall meeting, we generally meet at one of our members' locations, and they're usually in the Chicago area. So stop for just a second and just just for those who are not familiar, HFTC6 is an SAE committee like right. Interior Climate Control Committee. Right. It's like that, but it's for the off-highway, off-road, heavy-duty sector. Right. Okay. And so, you know, the ICC, Interior yeah. Climate Control, that's under the automotive section of SAE. Yeah. This is under the heavy, heavy equipment section, um, what they call CONAG, yeah. Construction and Ag. Um, and HFTC six stands for Human Factors Technical Committee Number Six. Okay. So <laughs> it does uh, cabin environments, cab controls. So it's like Mission Impossible Four. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, you know, it's the the pod that the operator sits in. It's the greenhouse on top of the on top of the the, the, the oven. And where <laughs> is that say. again? Where's that going to be? So most of our meetings are in the Chicago area. Okay. Because uh, like Detroit is. Mission Central for Automotive. automotive. Right. The Chicagoland area is Mission Central for Conag. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's September. And right. then I'm heading to Detroit. Right. The very beginning of October to go to the SAE meeting up there as part of the Thermal Management Symposium in Detroit. So I'll make a quick zip in and then zip out and, and, and uh, attend that meeting. Right. And then... Uh, what else do you have? So right after, uh, right after our Con Ag, I'll be going from, probably going from Chicago right to Cleveland for TMC. Right. So TMC has two shows a year, and this is their fall. Uh, it's actually the tech competition, yeah. which I'm really looking forward to because I've always gone to the spring. The, uh, spring is the really big TMC show. Mm -hmm. with uh, They have a huge trade show and, of course, all of the um, study group meetings. Mm -hmm. But the special one about fall is the tech competition. Mm -hmm. So this is um, kind of like what we went through uh, in school when you did tech competitions in trade school. And you get to go to the electrical station and you know, do some wiring repairs, or you get to go to the brake section and do brakes. Right. Um, except for this is heavy trucks, on-road truck, you know, right. class four through eight. Right. So. Um, and then, and, and, and then I know I'm going to head uh, for another Halloween in Las Vegas. Yep. Uh, another year at Apex. But um, I kind of want to just kind of go back to, you know, all of this travel that we'll be doing and so forth. And let everybody know that um, when we're doing this, we're engaging with our members. We're obviously soliciting new members. We're soliciting more information. I know in your trip to TMC, you hope to come back with some some great technical stuff that we can use in articles or blogs or uh, MSRs and, and so forth. But this is, is really a lot of the root of the industry so that when someone calls us and said, I heard about this, what's going on, that we can, we're, we're on top of it. We know what's happening. We can feed that information back. As you know, I have a, uh, an old friend that I used to work with who I routinely talk to and I'll get phone calls and I just got one today, a text message today. By the way, can you send me so-and-so's phone number? Well, absolutely, happy to do that. So, so this is all in support of our members. That's, that's an important thing to make sure that we're really on top of what's happening in the industry and helping to lead, not just follow. Right, and it's also driving the Max message, right? Yeah. We're putting out our message of what we do and what, how we 
uh, interact with our members and with the industry. Yep. And like you said, I mean, a lot of the times we are called upon as the experts. Yep. Uh, so with TMC, with just in particular with that group, um, you know, Max has done presentations for them when they want to know. For example, their medium truck study group wanted to know what's going on with YF. Right. Right. And who did they look to for that presentation? They yep. came to Max. Sure. Right. Sure. Yeah. No. So that's uh, it, that's awesome, and that's you know that's a lot of what we do, and and acting as a resource for for everybody. And then we know that the the big tamale. Um, well, two big tamales, one my charity drive out to Subaru of Indiana, which will take place the middle of January. But then after that, uh, right at the end of January, January 31st into the first few days of um, February is the Max Training Event and Trade Show the big event. in Orlando. Right. No, don't say the big event because oh, right, Jerry right. Trulli will don't get upset We'll cut that out of the right? video. Right. right. Sorry, G. We're good. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Um, but uh, but no, our annual training event, uh, which is setting up to be different this year. Different, right. We hope in a better way. We're, we're doing some different things with classes. We, we heard the feedback and some people said, hey, you know, I saw this great class from a particular trainer and I was really sad that after an hour and a half, I just, I felt like I didn't get the ending of the movie. Right. Uh, because it just felt like he had to compact it. And we said, hey, we heard you. Guess what? We're going to make that a, well, it's not a full three hours. It's two hours and 40 minutes, two hours and 45 minutes of that class to give you the bigger picture. Right. And uh, so we made some changes like that. We've got Amber joining us on the front end for their technical co-chair committee meeting with you know, um, all the, the decision makers, if you will, from uh, big chains and, and so forth and suppliers and, and whatnot. So I'm excited to have them join us on the, on the front end. We got a whole bunch of great networking events. Um, we've got a uh, training for the new technician. Right, and that's something that we've actually talked about doing for years, but mm -hmm. it would, it's always hard to find the spot where to put the class. Right. And I think we came up with a good plan. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag yet, but I think we came up with a good plan for this year. It, exactly, and that was important for us because, you know, just like anything, you, when you have a class and you have to decide, is this going to be for advanced folks, for intermediate folks, for beginning folks? In this particular case, we were able to come up with a slot and come up with a program that's really targeted at newer technicians just to make sure they have the basics of what matters. So if you're not a newer technician, it's not the program for you. We've got a whole other wonderful program for you, uh, but we think it'll be a great, a great split there. We're gonna spend some time with refrigerant manufacturers. We're gonna maybe, uh, maybe talk about some other important things. Um, I think we've talked about this, but uh, Carm Capriato will be doing our keynote and then also hosting our Saturday um, our um, Saturday uh, Town Hall. Our Saturday Town Hall. That's right, it. which I'm really looking right. forward to that. Our Saturday Town Hall. And we've got some, uh, some really, really good ideas there. We, we might have some special guests come in just for that um, to talk about things that are really, really uh, important to our industry and the automotive or heavy-duty or off-road or bus or truck or whatever repair industry in general. That whole thing. If you've ever heard right to repair, we, 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 it's a real hot topic now, and we're, we're working on uh, seeing if we can integrate a little bit of that into our Saturday uh, lunch panel. Right. Yeah, get some updates on where all that fun stuff stands. Right. So, anyway, anything else that we want to cover today? Uh, no, I think that's about it. That's about it. That's yeah. it for the quick update. That's it for the quick update. Our quick update that took uh, 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm looking at the camera here and it's counting and it's at 33 minutes. 32 so, minutes, yeah. So, so a half you, hour. Hey, that's not too bad. That's not bad. You got about right. 10 minutes to, to edit out. We'll, right. We'll edit out all the, the fun stuff. So um, anyway, it's always a pleasure to be here. And right. uh, I know we've got, uh, we've got visitors coming in soon. Right. So for Max, I'm Steve Shaver. I'm Peter Call. If you like this podcast, please give a thumbs up. And also, please subscribe to get notified of future podcasts. And if you want to be a guest on our podcast, then send $20 to Steve. <laughs> and, and I'll get you on the schedule. Cheers. This podcast is a production of Max. 
the Mobile Air Climate Systems Association. Max is the nonprofit trade association for the mobile air conditioning industry, representing manufacturers, tier one suppliers, tool and equipment providers, parts distributors, and of course, service shops, owners, and technicians. Max is a membership driven organization serving the industry through training, education, advocacy, government relations, standards writing, and EPA Section 609 certification. If you'd like to learn more about Max, please visit us on our website, www.maxmobileairclimate.org, where you can join Max as a member. This podcast was produced by me, Steve Shaver, executive produced by Melissa Pizarro and Pam Smith, and hosted by Steve Shaver and Peter Call. If you enjoyed this podcast, please give a thumbs up and please subscribe to us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. Thanks for listening.